All right. So um, let's get started. So earlier we had um, left off on Isaiah, finishing chapter Isaiah chapter 47, and now we are on Isaiah chapter 48. Um, reading now the NIV translation, and let's get started. So, stubborn Israel, verse one. Listen to this, you descendants of Jacob, you who are called by the name of Israel and come from the line of Judah, you who take oaths, oaths in the name of the Lord and invoke the God of Israel, but not in truth or righteousness, you who call yourselves citizens of the holy city and claim to rely on the God of Israel, the Lord Almighty is his name. I foretold the former things long ago, my mouth announced them and I made them known, for then suddenly I acted, and they came to pass, for I knew how stubborn you were. Your neck muscles were iron, your forehead was bronze. Verse 5, Therefore I told you these things long ago. Before they happened, I announced them to you, so that you could not say, My images brought them about. My wooden image and metal God ordained them. You have heard these things. Look at them all. Will you not admit them? From now on, I will tell you of new things of hidden things unknown to you. They are created now and not long ago. You have not heard of them before today, so you cannot say, yes, I knew of them. You have either you have neither heard nor understood. From of old, your ears have not been opened. Well, do I know how treacherous you are. You were called a rebel from birth. For my own, for my own name's sake, I delay my wrath. For the sake of my praise, I hold it back from you. So, so as not to destroy you completely. Verse 10. See, I have refined you, though not as silver, I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, for my own sake, I do this. How can I let myself be defamed? Defamed. I will not yield my glory to another. Israel freed. Verse 12. Listen to me, Jacob, Israel, whom I have called. I am he, I am the first and I am the last. My own hand laid the foundations of the earth and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I summon them, they all stand up together. Come together, all of you, and listen. Which of the idols has foretold these things? The Lord's chosen ally will carry out his purpose against Babylon. His arm will be against the Babylonians. Verse 15, I, even I, have spoken. Yes, I have called him. I will bring him, and he will succeed in his mission. Come near me and listen to this. From the first announcement, I have not spoken in secret. At the time it happens, I am there. And now the Sovereign Lord has sent me, endowed with, the spirit, with his Spirit. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God, who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your well-being like the waves of the sea. Your descendants would have been like the sand, your children like its numberless grains. Their name would never be blotted out nor destroyed from before me. Verse 20. Leave Babylon. Flee from the Babylonians. Announce with this with shouts of joy and proclaim it. Send it out to the ends of the earth. Say the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. They did not thirst when he led them through the deserts. He made water flow for them from the rock. He split the rock and water gushed out. There was no there is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. And that completes chapter forty eight. Chapter forty nine The Servants of the Lord Verse one Listen to me, you islands, hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born the Lord called me. From my mother's womb he has spoken my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing at all. Yet what is due me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. Verse 5. And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel 
to himself, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob, and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers. Kings will see you and stand up. Princes will see and bow down because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Restoration of Israel. Verse 8. This is what the Lord says, In the time of my favor I will answer you, and in the day of salvation I will help you. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people, to restore the land and to reassign its desolate inheritance, to say to the captives, Come out, and in those in darkness, be free. They will feed beside the roads and find pasture on every barren hill. Verse 10. They will neither hunger nor thirst nor will the desert heat or the sun beat down on them. He who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside springs of water. I will turn all my mountains into roads, and my highways will be raised up. See, they will come from afar, some from the north, some from the west, some from the region of Ashwan. What is that? Dead Sea Scrolls, Masoretic Text, Sinem. Verse 13, shout for joy, you heavens, rejoice, you earth, burst into song, you mountains, for the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me, the Lord has forgotten me. Verse 15, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Your children hasten back, and those who laid you waste depart from you. Lift up your eyes and look around. All your children gather and come to you. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, you will wear them all as, all as ornaments. You will put them on like a bride. Though you were ruined and made desolate, and your land laid waste, now you will be too small for your people, and those who devoured you will be far away. Verse 20. The children born during your bereavement will yet say in your hearing, This place is too small for us. Give us more space to live in. Then you will say in your heart, Who bore me these? I was bereaved and barren. I was exiled and rejected. Who brought these up? I was left all alone. But these, where have they come from? This is what the Sovereign Lord says. See, I will beckon to the nations. I will lift up my banner to the peoples and will bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their hips. Kings will be your foster fathers and their queens your nursing mothers. They will bow down before you with their faces to the ground. They will lick the dust at your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will not be disappointed. Can plunder be taken from warriors or captives be rescued from the fierce? Verse 25, but this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from warriors and plunder retrieved from the fierce. I will contend with those who contend with you and your children I will save. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. They will be drunk on their, on their own blood as with wine. Then all mankind will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Now complete chapter 49. Now we're in the 50s. Chapter 50, Israel's sin and the servant's obedience. Verse 1. This is what the Lord says. Where is your mother's certificate of divorce with which I sent her away? Or to which of my creditors did I sell you? Because of your sins, you were sold. Because of your transgressions, your mother was sent away. When I came, why was there no one? When I called, why was there no one to answer? Was my arm too short to deliver you? Do I lack the strength to rescue you? By a mere rebuke, I dry up the sea. I turn rivers into a desert. Their fish rot for lack of water and die of thirst. I clothe the heavens with darkness and make sackcloth its covering. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue. 
to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like being instructed. Verse 5, the sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting because the sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They, they will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Verse 10. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on their God. But now all you who light fires and provide yourselves with flaming torches, go walk in the light of your fires and of the torches you have set ablaze. This is what you shall receive from my hand. You will lie down in torment. And that completes chapter 50. Chapter 51. Everlasting salvation for Zion. Verse 1. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and, the quarry, and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. Instruction will come out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. Verse 5, my righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way, and my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. Hear me, you who know what is right. You people who have taken my instruction to heart, do not fear the reproach of mere mortals, or be terrified by their insults. For the moth will eat them up like a garment, the worm will devour them like wool, but my righteousness will last forever, my salvation through all generations. Awake, awake, arm of the Lord, clothe yourself with strength. Awake, as in days gone by, as in generations of old, was it not you who cut Rahab to pieces, who pierced that monster through? Verse 10, was it not you who dried up the, the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made a road in the depths of the sea, so that the redeemed might cross over? Those the Lord has rescued will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and, and sighing will flee away. I, even I, am he who comforts you. You, or who are you? that you fear mere mortals, human beings who are but grass. That you forget the Lord your Maker, who stretches out the heavens and who lays the foundations of the earth. That you live in constant terror every day because of the wrath of the oppressor, who is bent on destruction. For where is the wrath of the oppressor? The cowering prisoners will soon be set free. They will not die in their dungeon. Nor will they lack bread. Verse 15. For I am the Lord your God, who stirs up the sea so that it waves roar. Ooh, I like that. The Lord Almighty is his name. I put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. I, who set the heavens in place, who laid the foundations of the earth, and who say to Zion, you are my people. The cup of the Lord's wrath, verse 17. Awake, awake, rise up, Jerusalem, you who have drunk from the hand of the Lord the cup of his wrath. 
you who have drained to its dregs the goblet that makes people stagger among all the children she bore there was none to guide her among all the children she reared there was none to take her by the hand these double calamities have come upon you who can comfort you ruin and destruction famine and sword who can console you verse 20 your children have fainted they lie at every street corner like antelope caught in a net they are filled with the wrath of the lord with the rebuke of your god therefore hear this you afflicted one made drunk but not with wine this is what your sovereign lord says your god who defends his people see i have taken out of your hand the cup that made you stagger from that cup the goblet of my wrath you will never drink again i will put it into the hands of your tormentors who said to you fall prostrate that we may walk on you and you made your back like the ground like a street to be walked on Maccabees chapter 51 chapter 52 verse 1 awake awake zion clothe yourself with strength put on your garments of splendor jerusalem the holy city the uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again shake off your dust rise up sit enthroned jerusalem free yourself from the chains on your neck daughter zion now a captive for this is what the lord says you were sold for nothing and without money you will be redeemed for this is what the sovereign lord says at first my people went down to Egypt to live. Lately Assyria has oppressed them. Verse 5. And now what do I have here? declares the Lord. For my people have been taken away for nothing. And those who rule them mock, declares the Lord. All And all day long my name is constantly blasphemed. Therefore my people will know my name. Therefore in that day they will know that it is I who foretold it. Yes, it is I. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who brings good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people he has redeemed Jerusalem. Verse 10. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of your God. Depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Come out from it and be pure. You who carry the articles of the Lord's house, but you will not leave in haste or go in flight. For the Lord will go before you. The God of Israel will be your rear guard. So that means God has my back. There's a sermon on Sunday that JJ said at church. He said. He said, Jesus doesn't have my back. He carries me on his. Well, my, my Bible in Isaiah chapter 52 verse 12 says, But you will not leave in haste or go in flight, for the Lord will go before you. The God of Israel will be your rear guard. Rear guard. God's got my back. I don't know about this theology. Not this one, what the sermon was. All right. This suffering and glory of the servant. Verse 13, see my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being. And his form, excuse me, marred beyond human likeness. So, verse 15, so he will sprinkle many nations and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told, they will see. And what they have not heard, they will understand. That completes chapter 52. Chapter 53, verse 1, who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? 
He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Oh, there it is. That completes verse 5. Verse 6. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. That has been me. Multiple times. Yes. Okay. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shears is silent. It's huge, man. Like, I'm just picturing that in my mind. Like, what does that look like? Well, when Jesus went to be crucified, that's what it looked like. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? Wow. What a question. For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Verse 10. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. Can you believe that? It was God's will to do that to Jesus, his son. And through the Lord makes his life an offering for sin. He will see his offspring and prolong his days, and he will and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion. Verse 12. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. And that completes chapter 53. Wow. That's a good chapter. Chapter 54. The future glory of Zion. Verse 1. Seeing barren woman, who, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy, you who were never in labor, because more... Are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband says the lord enlarge the place of your tent stretch your tent curtains wide do not hold back lengthen your cords strengthen your stakes for you will spread out to the right and to the left your descendants will dis dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities do not be afraid you will not be put to shame do not fear disgrace you will not be humiliated you will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. Widowhood. Verse 5. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. It's just to show you, like, women, I guess, could live, you know, I guess. They do. They can live by themselves, you know, the... The Lord's their husband. The Lord's their father. And he's all our father, right? He is... Uh, I'm sorry. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. The Lord will call you back as if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit. 
a wife who married young, only to be rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with deep compassion I will bring you back. In a surge of anger I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have compassion on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. To me this is like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth. So now I have sworn not to be angry with you, never to rebuke you again. Verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Afflicted city, lashed by storms and not comforted, I will rebuild you with stones of turquoise, your foundations with lapis lazuli. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of sparkling jewels, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children will be taught by the Lord, and great will be their peace. In righteousness you will be established. Tyranny will be far from you. You will have nothing to fear. Terror will be far removed. It will not come near you. Verse 15. If anyone does attack you, it will not be, be my doing. Whoever attacks you will surrender to you. See, it is I who created the blacksmith, who fans the coils into flame, and forges a weapon fit for its work. And it is I who have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. No weapon formed against you will prevail. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. Wow. And that completes chapter 54. Chapter 55 Invitation to the Thirsty Verse 1 Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good, and you will delight in the riches of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen, that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Verse 5, surely you will not, or surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God. The Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and their unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Hmm. I'll finish it. Verse 9. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Ooh. It's another infamous verse. Verses. Yeah, these are these two verses are infamous. Infamous. Let's look up the definition of infamous. Well known for some bad quality or deed. Lord, forgive me, excuse me, because I think in my other video too I used the word infamous. I thought it was just well known, but it says well known for some bad quality or deed. And it's definitely not bad or quality. Lord, forgive me. <laughs> See, wicked, abominable. Yeah. 
looking for other trans other definition but yeah yeah I'm sorry Lord let me let me use another word this is a well used um, go to verses that um, that Christians use those Christians use I'm trying to think of a word come on I can think of a word let's see popular this these two verses are popular and I'll say it again verse 8 for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord Whew. as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts Ooh. verse 10 as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater so is my word that comes out from my mouth it will not return to me empty wow But, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent. Oh my goodness. Straight authority, man. I love it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper. And instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be the Lord's re renown for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. And that completes chapter 55. And we're going to look up uh, what a juniper looks like, which um, I did. Um, I bought the Arm and Hammer um, deodorant, and it's a juniper blast. I'll show you guys. Let's see. Juniper Berry. This one smells so good. Highly recommend. Best deodorant there is. Okay. Just trying to see what a juniper. Juniper Berry. You can actually eat this. Chapter 56 in the book of Isaiah, NIV translation. Salvation for others. Verse 1. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is close at hand and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed the one who does this. The person who holds it fast. Holds what fast? Who, who does what? Maintain justice and do what is right. Who keeps the Sabbath without desecrating it and keeps their hands from doing any evil. Let no foreigner who is bound to the Lord say, The Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And let no eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. For what is, for this is what the Lord says, To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose what pleases me, and hold fast to my covenant. Verse 5. To them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name, better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will endure forever, and foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to them, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and who hold fast to my covenant, though these I will bring 
to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Sovereign Lord declares, He who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. God's accusation against the wicked, verse 9, Come, all you beasts of the field, come and devour all you beasts of, of the forest. Verse 10, Israel's watchmen are blind. They all lack knowledge. They are all mute dogs. They cannot bark. They lie around and dream. They love to sleep. They are dogs without mighty appetites. They never have enough. They are shepherds who lack understanding. They all turn to their own way. They seek their own gain. Come, each one cries, let me get wine. Let us drink drink our fill of beer, and tomorrow will be like today, or even far better. And that completes chapter 56 in the book. How many chapters? 70? Oh, 66. Man, we might get done with this book. Chapter 57, verse 1. The righteous perish, and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away, and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Wow. I'm just going to write interesting right there. Verse 2, those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. But you, come here, you children of a sorceress, you offspring of adults and prostitutes, who are you mocking? At whom do you sneer and stick out your tongue? Are you not a broad of rebels, the offspring of liars? Verse 5, you burn with lust among the oaks and under every spreading tree. You sacrifice your children in the ravines and under the overhanging crags. The idols among the smooth stones of the ravines are your portion. Indeed, they are your lot. Yes, to them you have poured out drink offerings and offered grain offerings. In view of all this, should I relent? You have made your bed on a high and lofty hill. There you went up to offer your sacrifices. Behind your doors and your doorpost, you have been. You have put your pagan symbols. I just want to give a shout out to some people. Alexandra Martin. Uh, Ethan, Jack, uh, Isaiah, uh, Kevin, another Kevin, Becky, Caitlin, the people that, uh, the brothers and sisters in the Lord that I did life with in Tampa. God bless you. Shout you out. Mm, hallelujah. We're doing the Lord's work. Let us grow fire. All right. Let, let the Lord spark more fire in us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Forsaking me, you uncovered your bed. You climbed into it and opened it wide. You made a pact with those whose beds you love. And you looked with lust on their naked bodies. You went to Molech with olive oil and increased your perfumes. You sent your ambassadors far away. You descended to the very realm of the dead. Verse 10. You wearied yourself by such going about, but you would not say it is hopeless. You found renewal of your strength, and so you did not faint. Whom have you so dreaded and feared that you have not been true to me? and have neither remembered me nor taken this to heart. It is not because I have long been silent that you do not fear me. I will expose your righteousness and your works, and they will not benefit you. When you cry out for help, let your collection of idols save you. The wind will carry all of them off. A mere breath will blow them away. But whoever takes refuge in me will inherit the land and possess my holy mountain. Comfort for the contrite. Verse 14. And it will be said, build up, build up, prepare the road. Remember the obstacles out of the way of my people. Remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. Verse 15. For this is what the high and exalted one says. He who lives forever, whose name is holy, I live in a high and holy place. But also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit. To revive the spirit of the lowly and to, to revive the heart of the contrite. I will not accuse them forever, nor will I always be angry. For then they will 
they would faint away because of me, the very people I have created. I was enraged by their sinful greed. I punished them and hid my face in anger. Yet they kept on in their willful ways. I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will, but I will heal them. I will guide them and restore comfort to Israel's mourners, creating praise on their lips. Peace be to, to those far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. Verse 20, But the wicked are like the tossing sea, which cannot rest, whose waves cast up mire and mud. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. And that completes chapter 57. Chapter 58, true fasting. Hmm. Verse 1, Shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declares to my people their rebellion, and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out, they seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right. <laughs> and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for, for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have you humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fist. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Verse 5. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed? As for lying in, in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and unite or untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Wow. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. If you do, not, if you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, verse 10, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land, and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins, and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath, and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And that completes chapter 58. Chapter 59, Sin, Confession, and Redemption, verse 1. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. For your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt, your lips have spoken falsely, and your tongue mutters wicked things. No one calls for justice, no one pleads a case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments, they utter lies, they conceive trouble and give birth to evil. Verse 5, they hatch the eggs of vipers and spin a spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs will die. And when one is broken, an adder is hatched. Their co cobwebs are useless for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. Their deeds are evil deeds, and acts of violence are in their hands. Their feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. They pursue evil schemes. Acts of violence mark their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their paths. 
they have turned them into crooked robes. No one who walks along with them, along them will know peace. So justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is darkness. For brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Verse 10. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like people without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if it were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. We all growl like bears. We moan mournfully like doves. We look for justice, but find none. For deliverance, but it is far away. For our offenses, offenses are many in, our, in your sight, and your sins testify against us. Our offenses are ever with us, and we acknowledge our iniquities, rebellion and treachery against the Lord, turning our backs on our God, inciting revolt and oppression, uttering lies our hearts have conceived. So justice is driven back, and righteousness stands at a distance. This is huge. Lies our hearts have conceived. Lord, whatever lies my heart and mind have conceived, I pray you may just untie that knot and make it loose and pour out your truth in a straight and narrow way, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 14, so justice is driven back and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Verse 15, truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. The Lord looked and, what dis and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his, hand, his own arm achieved salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. According to what they have done, so will he repay, wrath to his enemies and retribution to his foes. He will repay the islands their due. From the west people will fear the name of the Lord, and from the rising of the sun they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent-up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. Verse 20. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you will not depart from you, and my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips, on the lips of your children and on the lips of their descendants from the time on and forever, says the Lord. That completes chapter 59. Chapter 60, the glory of Zion, verse 1. Arise, shine. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises up upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the hip. Verse 5. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Median and Ifa and all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. All Kedar's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar, and I will adorn my glorious temple. Who are these that fly along like clouds, like doves to their nest? Surely the islands look to me. In the lead are the ships of Tarshish, bringing your children from afar with their silver and gold to the honor of, of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Verse 10. Foreigners will rebuild your walls, and their kings will serve you. Though in anger I struck you, in favor I will show you compassion. Your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut, day or night, so that people may bring you the wealth of the nations. Their kings led in triumphal procession. For the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will perish. It will be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon will come to you, the juniper, the fir, and the cypress, together to adorn my sanctuary and I will glorify the place for my feet. The children of your oppressors will come bowing before you and all who despise you will bow down your feet. 
and will call you the city of the Lord, Zion, of the Holy One of Israel. Verse 15, Although you have been forsaken and hated with no one traveling through, I will make you the everlasting pride and the joy of all generations. You will drink the milk of nations and be nursed at royal breast. Then you will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring you gold and silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I will bring you bronze and iron in place of stones. I will make peace your governor and will and well-being your ruler. I like that. I will make peace your governor and well-being your ruler. Verse 18. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your, your borders. But you will call... Your walls, salvation, and your gates, praise. <laughs> you will call your walls, salvation, and your gates, praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and, and your God will be your glory. Verse 20. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Then all your people will be righteous, and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands, for the display of my splendor. The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. And that completes chapter 60. Swiftly. That's fast, right? Or smooth. Or both. Swiftly. At high speed. Quickly. I like that. I like that. Because you know what the fastest thing out there? It's light. Traveling like 186,000 miles per hour. That's the fastest thing we have. Is light. God made that. God spoke that. Think about how fast that is. Chapter 61. The year of the Lord's favor, verse 1. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me, to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that had been devastated for generations. Verse 5. Strangers will shepherd your flocks, foreigners will work your fields and vineyards, and you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations and in the riches you will boast. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance, and so you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people. And make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. Verse 10. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow so the sovereign lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations that completes chapter 61 chapter 62 zion's new name verse 1 for zion's sake i will not keep silent for jerusalem's sake i will not remain quiet till her vindication i i, I just love that in itself you know it's like when you're silent and you don't speak, you know, you're quiet. It's like, to me, a lot of times it throws me off. Like when, you know, people are like that, I it, it does. I'm just like, come on, don't you want to speak? Don't you want to chime in? Don't you want to just get in the action? You know, 
and I just love this. Like, I'm Lord's like, I'm not gonna be silent. I'm not gonna be quiet. I'm gonna, you know, it's like we have a mouth for a reason, man. Let's speak up. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn. I I say that because, you know, the devil has tried to shut my mouth my whole life. Not anymore. Her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hephazipa, which means my delight is in her. And your land, Beula, for the Lord, oh, what is that? means married. And the Lord will take delight in you, and your land will be married. Verse 5, as a young woman marries a young man, as a young man marries a young woman, so will your builder marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your, your God rejoice over you. I have posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest, and give him no rest till he established Jerusalem, and makes her the praise of the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, Never again will I give your grain as food for your enemies, and never again will foreigners drink the new wine for which you have toiled. But those who harvest, it will, t it will eat it. And praise the Lord. And those who gather the grapes will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Verse 10. Pass through, pass through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Remove the stones. Raise a banner for the nations. The Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to daughter Zion, see your Savior comes. See his reward is with him. And his recompense accompanies him. They will be called the holy people and redeemed of the, of the Lord. And you will be called, called sought after the city no longer deserted. And that completes chapter 62. Chapter 63. God's day of vengeance and redemption. Verse 1. Who is this coming from Edom? From Basra with his garments stained crimson. Who is this robed in splendor? Striding forward in the greatness of his strength. It is I proclaiming victory. Mighty to save. Why are your garments red? Like those of one treading the winepress. I have trodden the winepress alone. From the nations, no one was with me. I trampled them in my anger and trod them down in my wrath. Their blood spattered my garments and I stained all my clothing. It was for me the day of vengeance, the year for me to redeem had come. Verse 5, I looked, but there was no one to help. I was appalled that no one gave support. So my own arm achieved salvation for me and my own wrath sustained me. I trampled the nations in my anger. In my wrath, I made them drunk and poured their blood on the ground. Praise and prayer. Verse 7, I will tell of the kindness of the, the kindnesses of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised, according to all the Lord has done for us, yet the many good things he has done for Israel, according to his compassion and many kindnesses. He said, Surely they are my people. Children will be true to me. And so he became their savior. In all their distress, he too was distressed. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. Verse 10. Yet they rebelled and grieved the Holy Spirit. So he turned and became their enemy. And he himself fought against them. Verse 11, then his people recalled the days of old, the days of Moses and his people. Where is he who brought them through the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he who set the Holy Spirit among them, who sent his glorious arm of power to be a Moses's, Moses' right hand? Who divided the waters before them to gain for himself everlasting renown? Who led them through the depths? Like a horse in open country, they did not stumble. Like cattle that go down to the plain, 
They were given rest by the Spirit of the Lord. This is how you guided your people to make for yourselves a glorious name. Verse 15. Look down from heaven and see from your lofty throne, holy and glorious. Where are your zeal and your might? Your tenderness and compassion are withheld from us. But you are our father. Through Abraham does not know us, or Israel acknowledge us. You, Lord, are our father. Our redeemer from of old is your name. Why, Lord, do you make us wander from your ways and harden our hearts so we do not revere you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes that are your inheritance. For a little while your people possessed your holy place, but now our enemies have trampled down your sanctuary. We are yours from of old, but you have not ruled over them. They have not been called by your name. And that completes chapter 63. Chapter 64, the book of Isaiah, verse 1. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil. Come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome th things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. Verse 5. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you are angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. There it is. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord our Father, we are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. Verse 10. Your sacred cities have become a wasteland. Even Zion is a wasteland, Jerusalem a desolation. Our holy and glorious temple, where our ancestors praised you, has been burned with fire, and all that we treasured lies in ruins. After all this, Lord, will you hold yourself back? Will you keep silent and punish us beyond measure? That completes chapter 64. Chapter 65, Judgment and Salvation. I think we're almost done. Oh, yeah. Verse 1, I revealed myself, so judgment and salvation. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me, to a nation that did not call on my name. I said, here am I, here am I. All day long I have held out my hands, hands to an obstinate people who walk in ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations. A people who continually provoke me to my very face, offering sacrifices in gardens and burning incense on altars of brick, who sit among the graves and spend their nights keeping secret vigil, who eat the flesh of pigs and whose pots hold broth of impure meat. Verse 5, who say, keep away, don't come near me, for I am too sacred for you. Such people are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that keeps burning all day. Wow. See, it stands written before you. I will not keep silent, but will pay back in full. I will pay it back into their laps, both your sins and the sins of your ancestors, says the Lord. Because they burned sacrifices on the mountains and defied me on the hills, I will measure into their laps the full payment for their former deeds. This is what the Lord says. As when juice is still found in a cluster of grapes and people say don't destroy it, there's, there is still a blessing in it. So will I do in behalf of my servants. I will not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, those who will possess my mountains. My chosen people will inherit them, and, will, and there will my servants live. 
Verse 10, Sharon will become a pasture for flocks, and the valley, valley of Acre a resting place for herds, for my people who seek me. But as for you who forsake the Lord and forget my holy mountain, who spread a table for fortune and fill bowls of mixed wine for destiny, I will destine you for the sword, and all of you will fall in the slaughter. For I called, but you did not answer. I spoke, but you did not listen. You did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. My servants will eat, but you will go hungry. My servants will drink, but you will go thirsty. My servants will rejoice, but you will be put to shame. My servants will sing out of the joy of their hearts, but you will cry out from anguish of heart and wail and brokenness of spirit. Verse 15, you will leave your name for my chosen ones to use in their curses. The Sovereign Lord will put you to death, but to his servants he will give another name. Whoever invokes a blessing in the land will do so by the one true God. Whoever takes an oath in the land will swear by the one true God, for the past troubles will be forgotten and hidden from my eyes. New heavens and a new earth. Verse 17. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight, and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Verse 20. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them, or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain, They will, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune. For they will be a, bless, a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Verse 25, the wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountains, says the Lord. Well, that completes chapter 65. I haven't looked at the time yet, so let's continue. Uh, chapter 66 which is the last chapter in the book of Isaiah. I'm going to finish the chapter down. Look at the time. Judgment and hope. Verse 1. This is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where is my resting place be? Where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things, and so they came into being, declares the Lord? These are the ones I look on with favor, those who are humble and contrite in spirit, and who tremble at my word. But whoever sacrifices a bull is like one who kills a person, and whoever offers a lamb is like one who breaks a dog's neck. Whoever makes a grain offering is like one who presents pig's blood. And whoever burns memorial incense is like one who worships an idol. They have chosen their own ways, and they delight in their abominations. So I also will choose harsh treat treatment for them, and will bring on them what they dread. For when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, no one listened. They did evil in my sight and chose what displeases them. Displeases me. Sorry. Verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word. Your own people who hate you and exclude you because of my name have said, Let the Lord be glorified, that we may see your joy, yet they will be put to shame. Hear that uproar from the city, hear that noise from the temple. It is the sound of the Lord repaying his enemies all they deserve. Before she goes into labor, she gives birth. Before the pains come up, come upon her, she delivers a son. Who has ever heard of such things? Who has ever seen things like this? Can a country be born in a day, or a nation be brought forth in a, in a 
moment. Yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. Do I bring to the movement of birth and not give delivery? Says the Lord, do I close up the womb when I bring to delivery? Says the Lord, says your God. Verse 10, rejoice with Jerusalem and be, and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice greatly with her. All you who mourn over her, for you will nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breast. You will drink deeply and delight in your overflowing abundance. For this is what the Lord says, I will extend peace to her like a river and the wealth of nations like a flooding stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. When you see this, your heart will rejoice and you will flourish like grass. The hand of the Lord will be made known to his servants, but his fury will be shown to his foes. Verse 15. See, the Lord is coming with fire, and his chariots are like a whirlwind. He will bring down his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For with fire and with his sword, the Lord will execute judgment on all people, and many will be those slain by the Lord. Those who consecrate and purify themselves to go into the gardens following one who is among those who eat the flesh of pigs, rats, and other unclean things, they will meet their end together with the one they follow, declares the Lord. Yet, I'm sorry, and I, because of what they have planned and done, am about to come and gather the people of all nations and languages, and they will come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them, and I will send some of those who survived to the nations to Charshish, to the Libyans and Lydians, parentheses, famous as archers, close parentheses, to Tabal and Greece and to the distant islands that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. I love that. His fame. That's right. Jesus is the most famous person on earth. I think I wrote that in my last, in one of my questions on my New Testament test. Who was Jesus? Jesus is the most famous person on earth. They will proclaim my glory among the nations, verse 20, and they will bring all your people from all the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord on horses and chariots and wagons and all mules and camels, says the Lord. They will bring them as the Israelites bring their grain offering to the temple of the Lord in ceremonially clean vessels. And I will select some of them also to be priests and Levites, says the Lord. As the new heavens and the new earth that I make will endure before me, declares the Lord, so will your name and descendants endure. From one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. Verse 24, And they will go out and look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. The worms that eat them will not die. The fire that burns them will not be quenched. And they will be loathsome to all mankind. And that completes chapter 66 and that completes the book of Isaiah and we're a minute we're an hour 13 oh my goodness I thought we were like maybe 55 minutes okay okay we are good we are good we completed the book of Isaiah never done before yes sir I had to finish this book anyway. And now what's next? The book of Jeremiah, which I've never read before either. So all the way. So this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Getting to do the word. Getting to do the word. Oh, boy, oh yes. So this is going to lead into my 30-minute uh, uh, study of uh, a teacher of, uh, named R.C. Sproul. Um, my notes are in the red. That is today, Friday, June 10th. Um, the video I watch, which I will give a link, is the Great Commandment, Mark 12, 28-34, a sermon by R.C. Sproul. Um, so when, they, when Jesus talks about the greatest commandment, this is priority over chronologically. Okay, This is the most important. So one of the... I'm just going to read... I basically wrote down the verses um, all the way. As a matter of fact, let me see if I can do it. So, verses 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked them, "All the commandments of all the commandments, which is the most important?" And then Jesus quotes the Shema, which is uh, Deuteronomy 6. 
Uh, verse 29, the most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. You know, I asked God last year, what does that look like? And from that time... Every day, I believe God is showing me more and more, more and more. It, it, it's, it's what he created me to do. And I want to walk fully into that, 100%. If I, can do, if I can do football camps two hours Monday to Thursday for, for years, and I can, I can go to all these practices and, I, and, and, and all these games, and I, can, um, and I can do the Marine Corps boot camp for three months, and I, and, I, and I can be in the military for three years and ten months, what more can I do for my God? What more can we all do? Because there's, there's other people doing that left and right, nonstop. And that leads to this. Don't be lukewarm. That, what I just said, that's not lukewarm. That's not one foot in, one foot out. That's everything. That's all of you. All you have. We are to love God for who he is. And this is another question I ask myself. How do I know God? And I say I love God when I haven't read all his word. And that's what I'm doing with the spiritual boot camp as well. Well, the spiritual boot camp is more of a something else, but this helps tremendously cut down um, pages of the word for me. Because this year, that is my mission. I'm, I'm going to do that. I will. I must in Jesus' name. So I have a question for you. So what does this look like for a Christian? And with that.